This video is video 2 in this series of uh, magnetic compass and basically this one focuses on the geomagnetism or the earth's magnetic field. So the first video, the link of which I will provide you with this video, talked about a freely suspended magnet on the earth's surface and how it aligns itself with the magnetic lines of force. This video talks about the earth's magnetism which is experienced by a freely suspended magnet. The other video in this series talks about parts of a magnetic compass and the deviation of a magnetic compass and I'll provide you with the links of those videos as well along with this video. Alright, so just a quick recap of what we did in the first video. We talked about uh, how a freely suspended magnetic needle or magnetic bar will align itself with the magnetic lines of force at that particular place. The freely suspended magnetic bar has a north pole and a south pole. The north end of the pole, north end of the bar is denoted by a red color and the south end of the bar is denoted by a blue color. Alright, and we talked about how like poles repel and how unlike poles attract one another. So north pole will attract south pole and south pole will attract north pole and north and north and south and south will repel one another. And then we talked about dip. Dip is the angle that a magnetic needle makes with the horizontal if freely suspended. It's also called magnetic inclination. But today we'll talk about geomagnetism and that is the Earth's magnetism. The Earth's magnetism is caused due to its core. The core is made of highly volcanic and volatile material which undergoes changes every day as the Earth spins around its axis and it experiences uh, massive forces and the Earth's core undergoes changes every time there are uh, earthquakes or volcanic uh, eruptions and because of the, the Earth's magnetism keeps changing. Uh, we'll also talk about the Earth's magnetic north pole which is different from the true north. So the true north is denoted by 000, 000 but there is a magnetic, magnetic north uh, or magnetic north pole uh, where the, if you freely suspend a magnetic needle it actually points towards the magnetic north. It doesn't point towards the true north of 000. zero. And that is the property used by a ship's magnetic compass. Alright, so we'll start with that. So I'm just showing you this is the earth and of course it has a north pole and a south pole and uh, lines of force emit from the uh, one pole and go into the other. So with a magnetic bar it emits from the north pole and go into the south pole and uh, with the earth as well magnetic lines of forces emit from one pole and enter the other. So the intensity of the magnetic lines of force is maximum at the poles because that's where it's emitting from and entering. At the equator it's horizontal and uh, magnetic lines of force. These magnetic lines of force do not intersect one another, they do not cross one another, they are parallel lines of forces. Alright, now we talked about how uh, like poles uh, attract, uh, sorry, repel one another and unlike poles attract one another. Now, uh, what we want to show you here is that uh, um, magnetic needles north end is denoted by the red color and south end is denoted by the blue color. But when we suspend a magnetic needle, the north end of the magnet aligns itself with the north pole of the earth or other magnetic north pole. And because of this reason, if we combine the two properties that a freely suspended magnetic needle aligns itself with the earth's magnetic forces and the property that unlike poles attract one another so the north end of the earth's magnet or rather the earth the when we consider the core of the earth the earth's north magnetic north is denoted by the color blue which is the opposite to that of the magnetic needle so a magnetic needle that you see here is aligning itself with the magnetic lines of force so the magnetic needle is on your right side it's the thin needle or you can see it's a needle shape which has aligned itself with the magnetic meridian. In that magnetic needle, the north end is the red color. But because it attracts itself to the north magnetic pole, and we know that unlike poles attract one another, when it comes to the earth's core magnet, the earth's core magnet, the color coding is reversed. So the earth's north pole or north part of the magnet of the earth is denoted in blue color because it attracts the red portion of the magnetic needle. And similarly, the Earth's south magnetic pole is denoted by red color because it attracts the blue end of the magnet, which is the south end of the magnet. 
So that's why when it comes to the Earth's magnetism, the color coding is reversed. Now all this is very important when we will talk about how these kind of magnetic forces influence the ship and how does the ship get magnetized. All this will come together in the next video when I talk about the influence of the Earth's magnetism on the ship as a structure. All right. So of course the magnet always points towards the magnetic north which is different from the true north. Alright, as you can see here, and this is the magnetic meridian. Now you can see here the true north is ma marked, and so is the magnetic north, and they are different from one another, like I told you before. The true north is a fictional north that we use as for navigation, so that doesn't change. It is at zero zero zero. We measure all our courses and directions from the true north, but the magnetic north keeps changing on the Earth's surface because the uh, it depends on the Earth's core and the Earth's core goes through massive changes in its magnetism. So when you freely suspend a magnetic needle, it always points towards the magnetic north. No matter from where you suspend it, it will always points towards the magnetic north. However, unfortunately it cannot be used for navigation as I will show you because the magnetic north keeps on changing. We use it as a backup compass of course on the ship uh, because the main compass that we use is the gyro compass which always points towards the two north. Now this is an instrument I wanted to show you because when I talk to you about dip, the dip is basically the angle that the magnetic, a freely suspended magnetic needle makes with the horizontal. So at the equator it is absolutely horizontal so the dip is zero but as the magnetic needle starts to near the magnetic poles, north or south, it starts to dip towards the poles and almost becomes vertical at the pole. At that point the dip becomes 90 degrees. Alright, so this is an instrument used to measure the dip of the magnetic needle because if we measure the dip of the magnetic needle, uh, a chart is created and mariners can consult that chart to understand how accurate the magnetic compass will be at higher latitudes. So as you go towards higher latitudes, the compass, the magnetic needle will start to dip towards the pole. So either the red end of the dip pole, a uh, red end of the magnetic needle will dip towards the north pole and the blue end will dip towards the south pole. But as they start to dip and becomes vertical, the magnetic compass starts to become unreliable. So that is why magnetic compasses are unreliable or considered unreliable at lat higher latitudes. So normally the popular value used is north of 70 degrees and north of 70 degrees north or 70 degrees south, the magnetic compass becomes unreliable. Alright, so that's because the magnetic needle starts to dip towards the poles and is not horizontal as it should be. Over here it shows how the magnetic north has been moving in its positions right from 1831 to 2004 and you can find the latest statistics uh, on, on Google for sure. It show you, shows you the movement of the magnetic north. So basically you can see the magnetic north doesn't stay steady in its position. It keeps changing over the year it, it has shifted positions. And since the magnetic needle will always point towards the magnetic north which keeps changing positions, we cannot use it as a reliable system of navigation. We use it only as a backup system of navigation. Whereas you can see in comparison, the geographic north, which is a fictional direction of 000, always stays in one position. Alright, I'll keep going. So again, this is a chart showing the how the magnetic north has shifted its position over the period more uh, towards from 2010 goes, goes, gives you data from up to 2010 as well you can find more latest data uh, on google for sure all right so just uh, uh, some terms here the magnet there is a something called the magnetic equator or the acclimic line which joins all places where the dip is zero. It lies near the geographic equator, but it is not like the geographic equator. It is not a symmetrical great circle, but it is like a sinus curve. I'll show you what it means with the figure. And then also there's, there are isoclinic lines. Those lines join places of equal dip and it runs approximately parallel to the equator. So you can see that the yellow line here is the geographic equator which is an imaginary line. It's a great circle which divides the earth into two equal spheres. But the magnetic equator is the red one and you can see it's like a sinusoidal curve. It's like a sinus curve. So if you 
got the sine of angles that's the curve you get and uh, that joins places of zero dip so it's not exactly at the equator but this is where the magnetic needle is horizontal with the uh, magnetic needle stays horizontal so the angle it makes with the horizontal is zero this is the place of zero dip this is a chart that you can use uh, which provides you with the magnetic dip values magnetic dip is also called magnetic inclination so if you see the top left hand corner of the chart it says magnetic inclination chart of canada and basically it gives you the magnetic dip values in these areas so you can see how much the needle will dip or how what angle the magnetic needle will make with the horizontal because that pretty much tells you whether it's reliable for navigation or not so the horizontal the more horizontal it says the better it is for navigation this is a more close up look of the same chart as i told you before the earth's magnetism works very similar to the magnetic bar the lines are force emit from one pole and enter the other pole and they are the intensity is maximum at the uh, one pole and the other and minimum at the equator so the earth's magnetic field also varies at any given place and i talked to you about this already that the intensity is maximum at the poles and intensity is minimum around the equator the magnetic meridian is an arc of a great circle so at any given place the earth's total field can be resolved into i'll show you a horizontal and vertical component all right so the earth's total field is denoted by t the little t and has been resolved into a vertical component which is denoted by z and a horizontal component denoted by h okay the angle that the resultant magnetic field makes with the horizontal is called the dip for that place now for any angle of dip which is denoted by theta degree the horizontal component can be calculated as h equals t cos theta where theta is the dip and the vertical component z is calculated by t sin theta where theta is of course the dip therefore for any angle of dip h becomes equal to total magnetic field multiplied by cos of dip and the vertical component becomes total magnetic field multiplied by sin of dip so if you put in the values of the dip in the sin and cos values you will realize that at the magnetic equator since dip is zero the total magnetic component is equal to the horizontal component only there is no vertical component because the magnetic needle is absolutely horizontal and at the magnetic poles since the magnet becomes absolutely vertical there is no horizontal component the total earth's magnetism is equal to the vertical component of the earth's magnetism or vertical component only so the ship's magnetic compass is designed in such a way that if it only responds to the horizontal component of the earth's field prevent the compass card from dipping in latitudes other than where the dip is zero the compass is designed so that the center of gravity of the card and the magnetic compass magnetic system is well below the point of suspension all right uh, the angle between the geographic meridian and the magnetic meridian as you can see here is called variation and we'll discuss this variation in my other video as well all right so as you can see here the magnetic needle is pointing towards the magnetic north pole whereas the two meridians are pointing towards the geographic north and that is why this angle is called variation isogonic lines are lines of equal variation so lines that join lines of equal variation are isogonic lines as you can see they are drawn on the chart the pink colored lines are isogonic lines they join line join lines of equal variation agonic lines are lines of zero variation because change in variation occur with changes in geographic position with time as you can see and due to magnetic anomalies something like say if there is a earthquake or a tectonic plate shifting or volcanic eruptions so that is why the earth's magnetism changes with geographic places that's why the ship's magnetism also changes with geographical places so that's that's the variation that changes okay so deviation changes with heading but the variation changes with geographic location changes in variation do not occur with a change in heading so basically if you are in a certain geographic area the variation will remain the same irrespective of your heading so over here you can see that magnetism is not static and that is the whole principle behind the ship's magnetic compass that 
the magnetic compass keeps changing as it gets influenced by the varying forces of the earth's magnetism and that's why it's important and it's necessary to keep adjusting the ship's magnetic compass to keep the deviation the variation to a minimum you cannot have absolutely zero uh, influence of magnetic compass but uh, you can minimize it to a maximum that you can all right i hope this video was useful and it was good for your learning and it helps you understand the properties of the earth's magnetic compass uh, if you have any questions please feel free to write to me i try to keep these videos short so that it doesn't get boring for you i'll see you soon with my